What are mono block amplifiers and how good is Fozzy Audio's new flagship V3 mono mono block amplifiers? Keep watching and find out. Hey, welcome to another innovational production. Now the good folks at Fozzy Audio sent me the V3 mono block amplifiers, which is their flagship product and had just finished a campaign on Kickstarter. In fact, they raised over $500,000 for this new amplifier. This is a completely independent review. They have no say in the content of this video and everything I say here is my own opinion. So a little bit about myself and my credentials in talking about amplifiers. A few years back, I had a website called Value Hi-Fi. In fact, in my innovational channel, I did quite a few videos on Value Hi-Fi. The aim of Value Hi-Fi was to help people get the best sounding Hi-Fi system for the lowest possible price. And I talked about amplifiers and speakers and preamps and the like. Now, my experience with amplifiers goes back 11 years ago when I came across the mighty Tripath amplifier. From that moment on, I was completely hooked on mini amplifiers. It was really amusing and also inspirational to watch people hook up the $15 cheap China-made Lipa amplifier to speakers costing thousands of dollars and to see how well it performed. So before I talk about the V3 Mono, I'm going to talk about what a mono block is for those who may not know. Now a regular amplifier is stereo, which means it's got two channels going into it and also outputs to two speakers. In contrast, a mono block only has one input. So you either put a left input or right input into the mono block amplifier and the output only outputs to one speaker. In other words, two mono block amplifiers equals one stereo amplifier. So the question is, why would you bother having two mono block amplifiers instead of having one stereo amplifier, which probably simplifies things? Well, there are three main advantages to mono block amplifiers. I'll share them with you. First of all is higher power output. So for example, let's say you had a stereo amplifier, which is rated at 200 watts. That means it's 200 watts divided into two channels, which is only 100 watts per channel. But imagine you had the same amplifier, but using that as a mono block, and you've got two of them, that equals to 400 watts in total. Now the second benefit is better quality sound. So the more power available means less strain, and the less strain means more control. And this means more accurate bass and transient response as well as clarity. Now the third benefit of monobox amplifiers is there is no crosstalk. So what does this mean? It means there's no interference between the left and right channels because these are completely separated from each other in a monoblock setup. What are the cons of monoblock amplifiers? Well, there are actually a few options available on the market and they are quite a niche thing. In fact, um, most monoblock setups are quite expensive, you know, for audiophiles. In fact, the V3 model, which I'm going to showcase to you soon, is actually the cheapest monoblock amplifier that I've actually seen on the market. There could be others which are cheaper, but these are the cheapest ones I've found. So here it is. This is the V3 mono. It's a mini amp. As you can see, it's about the size of my hand. So it's similar in size to a lot of mini amplifiers that are available on the market, especially from China. So at the front, you've got two switches. The first switch is an off, auto, and on switch. Now, off and on is self-explanatory. The auto means that if it's sensing some kind of input from an audio source, it will automatically wake up the amplifier. If it doesn't receive any um, signal for 10 minutes, it turns off, which is pretty handy. In fact, my um, studio monitors, KRK um, Rocket 5, uh, actually has this function as well. Now on this side, you've got a selector, either XLR input or RCA input. At the back here, you've got a RCA input and also an XLR input. With the RCA input, you've got the gain selector here. You can choose from 25 decibels or 31 decibels. Um, so you can play around with that to see what you prefer. The XLR input, now this is a, a balance connector, which means that over longer distances, there is less interference and less noise. But by and large, if you're using RCA over a short distance, you shouldn't have any issues. You've also got the speaker outs. So you've got the positive and negative speaker connection to go to one speaker. And also you've got a DC socket here for the power. And it says here it accepts between um, 32 to 48 volts. Now I'm going to talk about the power supply that comes with it. Now this thing is huge. So that's the size of the power supply. And that's the size of the amplifier. So it's pretty comparable in size. Now a lot of times when you buy like a 
um, cheap mini amplifier, you get a very small power supply, sometimes even a wall wart. Now, these V3 monos are rated to 240 watts. This power supply is 48 volts times 5 amp. Okay, so you do the maths. Oh. So 240 watts uh, this is capable of. Um, and power supplies are very important when it comes to amplifiers, and, and this is like a big beefy unit. So because this is a power amplifier, you need to have a pre-amplifier in order to adjust the volume, because there's no volume control on this. So you've got the your whatever source of um, audio is, goes to a pre-amplifier, and then one channel goes into here. So a left channel or right channel goes into one of each um, of the monoblocks. Now this amplifier is based on the Texas Instruments TP32 series of amplifiers. And it's got this thing called PFFB. Okay, it's a bit technical, I'm going to read it to you. PFFB stands for Post Filter Feedback. And this is a design that results in lower output noise, improved total harmonic distortion performance, improved IMD, which is intermodulation distortion performance, lower output impedance, and frequency response that is less affected by load impedance, and also suppression of non-linearities of the LC filter, which blocks electromagnetic interference. Now that was taken directly from the Texas Instruments website. So in translation, that means this design is really good and making the amp sound good with less noise. Now some people say that it's useless doing a sound test of amplifiers or speakers on YouTube because you can't actually hear how it sounds. Now while I agree with that, I know that these videos are really popular. Uh, I for one really like you know watching someone else you know take a video of their hi-fi system. Um, it's just the next best thing to, to being there and experiencing for yourself. And in fact, even though you can't pick up much of the bass, you can actually hear um, the, the clarity um, of the sound and the, the separation. My conclusion about these V3 monos it is a definite buy for about 300 US dollars for the pair. You're not going to find anything in that price range that's going to sound as good. In fact, you could be paying a lot more for a much bigger system that may not sound as good. And that's speaking from experience of someone who's listened to amplifiers on the lower end, someone who's assembled their own amplifiers and someone who's actually listened to high-end amplifiers. Um, I've got friends who are audiophiles, some who have spent in excess of $50,000 on systems. So yeah, the V3 Mono, um, I really highly recommend it. If you're interested in this and you want to support the channel, please check out the links in the description below. And remember, to use these, you need a pre-amplifier, something that can adjust the volume, and obviously you need a music source as well. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.